Uh, she'll be able to hear it. Just okay. don't worry about it. Just okay. asking. Okay. Uh, just let me do my show. I am. Okay, so sit over there and uh, uh, shut up. Uh, anyway. <laughs> See, folks, this uh, is our, our, our number, if you don't have it, is uh, it's an easy Skype number to remember. Uh, you just call uh, uh, you just call uh, GabNet Live. That's the number you call. And uh, we start off with Mark Thorner is the first person here. And then we're joined, joined by Josh Wheeler. Uh, and uh, Mark, uh, 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 who, who was I, I? You were the one I was going to ask about. He's still alive. It, it, Zachary is still alive. Now, for some reason, and don't ask me how I might know this little bit of information, he might be living up in the Upper East Side. Oh, really? Yeah. He's in his 90s now, yeah, well, too. I, yeah. Um, um, yeah, I... Uh, I heard that, and then I, you know, then I wondered just now, you know, is he is he alive? You know, you don't know. Uh, 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 so anyway, let me just tell everybody who we've got here. We've got Tony Magno. Hello, Tony. Hey. Uh, we got Rob's out there. Hello, Rob. Uh, hey there, Alex. Uh, Phil Myers out there. Patrick's out there. Uh, let's see who else. Josh is out there. And, uh, uh, but anyway, uh, let's get back to Mark here a second. So, Zacherly is still alive. He's still alive. 95. Son, let's explain who John Zacherly is, because, you know, <laughs> the, 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 the problem is that people with radios uh, in each, in those days, in various cities, they, they were big stars in each town. Uh, and, and they were, they were great, big stars. I mean, big, huge, giant, humongous radio stars, but then you would leave beyond the city limits and nobody knew who the hell they were, right? So um, that being the case, uh, a, a guy like John Zacherly, who was, he was huge here, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe it isn't known elsewhere, but the New York market where he made an impact. And he was a, one of these guys who would host horror movies on um, what Saturday night was it? What night of yeah, the week? He started in Philadelphia. Chiller Theater. Chiller he started Theater. in Philadelphia. Yeah. Uh, under, the, under the name Roland. Uh huh. And when he got to New York, he had to change it to, to Zacherly. I'm, I'm wondering. Know? Was I'm trying to remember if his name was really actually John Zacherly. I think yes, it was. I think it, was. it was. It didn't end with a Y. Oh. Yes, that's correct. Oh, it ended with an E. Yeah. yeah. I see. Zacherly. By the way, Rick, we can't see you for some reason. Oh, we'll fix that right you'll, now. You'll fix that. Uh, now, because tonight's TV night. Of course. And everybody has to see you. Look, everybody can see Rick and his lovely wife, Teresa. They're there together. How are you, kids? Hello. And welcome to the dating game, uh, the newlywed game. <laughs> <laughs> we decided to have wild monkey sex tonight. In honor, in honor <laughs> to <do that. laughs> I don't know why I call it wild monkey sex. But I guess monkeys do have wild sex. I would think. Hang, it, hanging from the lights in the walls, huh? Don't they throw and, feces and then, around? And then you top it off with a banana. You know, what could be better? <laughs> do, you, do you ever see the, they have documentaries about bonobos? Bonobos, bonobos. yeah. Bonobos, They're crazy. Bonobos, they haven't gay sex. They're doing well, the, the problem with a bonobo stuff. is I can never look at a bonobo and not think Jimmy Durante. <laughs> now, Jimmy Durante, for more people who don't know who I'm talking about, was a performer uh, who was, by the way, the mob's favorite comedian. They used to love him. That's why he always played the, uh, um, what's the, uh, Copa. the Copacabana, which was all, was all mobbed up in those days. And uh, um, Jimmy Durante had this big nose and, you know, talk like this, right? And, uh, huh? What were you going to what did you say, Teresa? Didn't he do that like ah cha 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 thing uh, or yep. whatever? Yeah. Right? I, well, I'll tell you a story. My father had this uh, big nose on him. Uh, my father had really, I would say, one of the classic big noses of all time. Uh, and, and that's why I relate to bonobos. Oh. Uh, and uh, he was working with Durante once. And uh, Durante who also, you know, the big thing about Durante was they called him the schnoz because he had this big nose. And he walked by my father and he stopped for a moment and then he did that slap he used to do on his side and he looked at my father and went, 
I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. So that that's uh, that's my my uh, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy Durante story about my father. But anyway, the bonobo always reminded me of Jimmy Durante. They just got that big silly nose. Well, that's our discussion for tonight, folks, and I hope well, you've enjoyed well, like, it. Like, I, I know it wasn't political, but who cares? Yeah. Anyway. It's Friday. Who cares? Sure. Yeah. Hey, I think, wait a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A full house, ladies and gentlemen. Give go. yourself a big round we of applause. It. Less than ten minutes. And, and, and we, then we probably have nine people listening. So, you know. <laughs> Like I, I got the TV on now. You know, what's strange about the TV thing. I got the TV thing on now. There are only five people watching it. But over the week, do you know how many people watch that damn TV thing? Between one thing and another, four hundred people watched it last week. Oh, you that's know, not bad. Yeah, it's not bad at all. You know, so did uh, Zachary do the song "The Monster Mash"? I, did, no. he, did he do a version of it? No. He did do a version of it, yes. But Gary Pickett was the guy that had the, Listen, uh, uh, the get out. Uh, uh, Boris, uh, what was his Bobby, name? Boris, Bobby, Boris, Bobby Pickett. Pickett. Bobby Boris Pickett. Boris Bobby Pickett, yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, Zachary Lee's radio was stolen when he came to uh, Brooklyn College. Uh, he, he visited the radio station there, WBCR. And uh, uh, my only Zachary story is that I know that his... Uh, his AM/FM radio was boosted out of his car yeah. <laughs> when well, he visited. Well, Zach and I were really good friends because we worked at, uh, at WPLJ together. He had worked for a while at WNEW, and yeah. he, I, what I always loved about Zachary is he would, uh, you know, he did the TV thing, he did the horror movies, and that was what he was known for. But then in the later years, when the TV stuff wasn't working, he went into radio and became a disc jockey, and, and people loved him, just loved him, mm -hmm. and I loved great. him. He's a great guy. And, but we, he would always talk like this on the air, kind of like this. He was always kind of like mumbling in a way. All yeah. the weather, yeah. WPLJ, yeah. All, uh, all the weather. <laughs> and he would always mumble like this. And, and, <laughs> and they had Allison Steele on the station with him the at, at, at NEW, and she was called the Nightbird. Yeah. But Zach would mumble, right? And if you listen closely, he used to refer to her as, uh, next up after me is Allison Steele, the night turd. <laughs> I always loved him for that. Um, but anyway, he um, uh, he came over to WPLJ, and we became uh, good friends. And uh, uh, <laughs> one day we're out. We decided to go out to the beach together. I don't know why, but here's this this horror show host uh, and and me going out to the beach. And I don't know, we go out to Long Island somewhere and we go to some beachside community to go get like a hot dog or something. And we're sitting there having a hot dog together and all of a sudden these girls are staring at us and he looks over at me and goes, I think they just saw a horror show host and a talk, <laughs> and a talk show guy. <laughs> so his entire uh, conversation, his entire demeanor is exactly the same when he goes through life. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. But I mean, well, just a wonderful guy. So I wonder if he's yeah. still alive. Gee, I should, I should try to look him up. He's not that much older than I am. What's he, what did you say, 90? 95. 95. 95 years old. 95. Wow. Oh, you just looked it up, did you, Jim? I looked. At, I sent it to you on Facebook earlier. I sent you a link uh, in the messages when you yeah. were first talking about him. Yeah. Uh, do you remember John Zachary, uh, Tony? You know what? No. I. I maybe it was. I was too young. How old? How old are you? I'm 45. Yeah, 45. Yeah. I'd probably be too old already. I do remember on any W when I was a kid because I used to call the radio station. Yeah. I remember. I think I remember. Uh, What's his name? Scott Muni Scotso. Yeah. I remember listening to him. I know Richard Neer was there, and I forgot some of the other ones. Uh, Carol Miller. I don't know if she was on any W or not. Yeah, no. That, these are all people that came later. These are oh, all, these okay. were all the yeah. kids, you know. Okay, yeah. yeah. Zach really used to host I mean, concert, huh? After after concert Zach left. Central Park. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I was just going to say after Zachary left the radio full time, he came back every year to host the uh, Halloween show. On, I think it was PLJ. Yeah, he would, no, but he would also do a TV show, too, I think. Right. Uh, he, you know, it was kind of like, I remember with Zach, Halloween was like his night to make money. 
Right. Yeah. And then it became Elvira. Yeah. I, and, you know, every every market had uh, had a uh, had a horror show host. And the reason was the cheapest films that TV stations could buy up in those days were the old horror films, the B movie horror films. And so they would just get some guy to go on and uh, and show yeah. these stupid horrible movies but if they got the right guy people would watch it for the wraparounds and not for the movie and uh, uh i remember that uh, there was a there was a there was a guy down in philadelphia and i'm trying to remember his name now but he became andy oh. and anderson first Chicago, name, actually ernie anderson Ber Ber er er ernie anderson and the ernie announcer. anderson right. became the voice of abc if you remember yes, correctly that's right. And yeah. the father of Paul Thomas Anderson, the director. Is he yep. really? Ah, yeah. And he yeah. was the host of horror films. On, oops, yeah. Wait a minute. I have to get rid of Charlene. Sorry, Charlene. People. Goodbye. Uh, because uh, I, I put on one person too many and then everybody froze up. So uh, we'll have to wait now for everybody to start their cam everybody's cameras to start okay. again. Uh, plus, she'll go to sleep anyway. You know, it doesn't, doesn't matter. <laughs> Um, uh, uh, <laughs> there she is now. Uh, we, I think we lost Phil there, but I think he's he'll be coming oh, back. They're back, huh? R I see Rick and Rick's back. back. Well, Phil's still kind of out there, and the, the and Mark, you're still whirling around, and Tony, you're still whirling around. Uh, yeah, when you talk about uh, uh, the early, uh, but Ernie Anderson was uh, uh, the uh, the host. Uh, down in Philadelphia, and he became a major announcer. So he's Paul Thomas Anderson's father. Yep. Son of a bitch. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, that's good to know. Are you still there? Are you there, Phil? Phil's got, got a problem Phil's here. Friend. Oh, there we go. He's coming back. There he is. Yeah. And, and t uh, 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 Tony should be coming back into view shortly, too. In case people don't know, the reason why we... Uh, uh, we care about the video, especially tonight, is that we are actually simulcasting this on uh, live stream. You go to livestream.com, new.livestream.com forward slash A Bennett, and uh, there you can see me and all my uh, crazies here uh, live. Um, did you add one more person or uh, the 11th? Uh, what? Uh, uh, did you add the 11th person? Yeah, it was Charlene. Uh, but you know, I can get. I don't feel bad about getting rid of her. Number one, she doesn't call that often, and secondly, when she does, she never says anything, and then falls asleep. <laughs> you know, there's nothing. There's nothing worse than trying to do your best possible show here, and then look at one of these frames of people, and they're dead asleep. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, Mark, we're starting yeah. to restart your camera. You do the same thing, Tony. That's oh, you see me? I don't see you, Alex, either. You can't, see you. you can't see me? Yeah, Alex, yeah. you're swirling okay, around. I see uh, myself. Hold on a second. I'll turn myself Start back around again. And How, how's that? Am I coming back? Yeah, still not on yet, but swirling. you'll get there, I think. I think it's up. Tony and Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you see me, guys? No, no. I can't see you. Can't see oh, I just restarted. I see myself. Yeah, I just restarted mine, too. Yeah, yeah. No. I'll restart the Give it a moment. I think it takes a little while for it to come back. Yeah, well, anyway. Thanks, Charlene. We really appreciate that. <laughs> of course, who's the I idiot? The whole show. Who's, who's the idiot? Me. Uh, anyway, can you see me yet, everybody? No, nope. not yet. Nope. nope. Not yet. Oh, now you can see me, Jim? No. Nope. No. Nope. I can't see you. I can't Son see you, bitch. Mark, or Tony. Son of a That's bitch. weird. I, I can That's... see. I can see myself. Wait a minute. You can see me, Rob? No, no, I oh, can't. No, who said they could see me? I can't see it. Nobody can see me. No. no. Nobody can see I it. I can see myself. Okay, I'm turning my video off, and I will turn it on again. I'm going to do the same. Yeah, yeah I'll do the same. Off? Yeah. There's, oh, there's Alex. Alex. Did, okay. did, I come, did, yeah. am I, did I come on now? Yeah, yeah. Alex is on now. No? Isn't technology so we'll wonderful? It, yeah. <laughs> isn't, isn't Go back to terrestrial radio. What? Go go back. To let's go back to terrestrial radio. Yeah, let's so we don't go have to worry about this. Take radio. phone no calls. No cameras, though. Huh? No cameras at all, though. This is cool. What do you mean, no cameras at all? If you go back to terrestrial know. radio, <laughs> it'll just be phone calls. You don't get the nice. Yeah. I think it, yeah. The well, camera. I like. See, I like seeing the people who call this program. Sure. Yeah. Because it makes me feel better about the way I look. 
Uh, <laughs> no, I I like why, me, I uh, like looking at the people on this show because oh, also you're st- frozen up still, Patrick. For some reason well, his, I've uh, got his still picture. Yeah, yeah he still got the, the Death Star ball gag. Yeah, there. But that's so hilarious to look at. It doesn't bother me. Yeah, no, it, it, it it's. It, uh, oh, there we there, go. There's Mark's Mark. Back. Mark. Mark. Yeah. Now that's Still interesting. on Tony. Oh, and Charlene is trying to call back again. <laughs> Can you see She's Charlene Gayavec. Well, you notice know she's probably not listening to the show. Yeah. Yeah. She's calling, so she doesn't know what's going on. Well, so. she's got to do it. She's got to call. Otherwise, she's not going to be able to go to sleep tonight. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Or her sedative. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, uh, anyway, where were we? We were talking about uh, oh, exactly. yeah, the horror show host. So there, oh. was one, there was one in every market, and uh, yep. you had Elvira, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, you had uh, oh god. Well, hell, the, the original one out in California, Vampira. Vampira, yes. Yeah. Who was? In case people don't know who that was, uh, she was in uh, she was in uh, uh, Plan Nine from Outer Space. That's right. Yeah. I was Ampira, and, uh, and uh, she would host this one. Shows. This one wasn't a uh, vampire-like uh, person, but uh, we had uh, Carol Dota, uh, who was um, uh, really? for Channel Thirty Six. Uh, do you remember? Uh, were you out here then when Carol well, Dota was? Rem- the... You see, you don't remember me at Channel Thirty Six, do you? Uh, I know you were on. Uh, you were Captain UHF on That's Channel. That's correct. I was Captain <laughs> UHF. Yes. <laughs> I did exactly what did, what Zachary did for horror movies. I did for science fiction. That's right. That's right. And I, 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 I uh, would uh, wear this uh, helmet. I still own it with a uh, with a propeller on the top. <laughs> Put it on for TV. And, and I, I think I had some uh, some uh, really lame puppets that you know. I, I, maybe. Yeah. I, I know that we used to watch afterwards. You had a list of what time. Your spots were going to be on, and uh, we would watch. Uh, you know, oh, seven oh eight. Uh, you know, you had the. Well, here, here was a story. Here's a funny story. I was doing this show every week called uh, uh, Captain UHF, and I would go in there, and I would, uh, I would, uh, uh, I, m- I remember one thing. Uh, the uh, the boss, Jim Gabbert, had a dog, and it was this big, like almost like it looked like a wolf, okay, uh, or maybe even worse, right? And I had a puppet that I used. I, I not, and it wasn't meant to be used well. I would have the puppet on my hand, and you would see part of my arm, and you'd see me move my lips when I talked, you know, all of that, all right? Uh, eggs are ready. Um, and um, uh, one day I'm getting ready to do the show, and this fucking dog of Gabbert's grabs the puppet, Mr. <laughs> Rabbit, okay? And and walks away with the with my with my with my puppet. He probably ripped it. And so his I went, studio, his puppet. So I went chasing <laughs> the dog around the studio, and he's having a grand old time with this rabbit in his mouth. He thinks he just went out and made a kill or something. And uh, I find I'm grabbing the, the the rabbit out of his mouth. Give me that, you son of a bitch! And everything. And everybody's going, "That's Jim's dog. Don't talk to him that way." I said, <laughs> "What is he? The fucking general manager?" Well, here was the funny thing about Channel uh, 36. And it was Channel 20. It wasn't 36. I did another show for 36. But that that was just... uh, uh, Forget it. I don't even want to get into that. But anyway, so it was Channel 20. And uh, I I don't know if I'm telling tales out of school, but Jim was gay. Very. Not not just a little gay. (laughs) He was like really, really gay. Okay? But he didn't want anybody to know it. Right, so did he, you ever go out on his boat? Yes, yes. <laughs> and you didn't know? <laughs> well, no. I, 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 I got the general idea one day when I went in there, and they were remodeling Channel Twenty because it had been an old yeah. warehouse, and now they were spiffing it up so it became kind of a decent-looking business place. And yeah. there are all these guys working, hammering nails into the wall, but they're like wearing coveralls with shirts off. You know, and they're all blonde haired, <laughs> blue eyed. And it's like, oh, that's what he's doing here. 
It was like it was like it was like uh, you could have made like a gay porn film out of that thing, and uh, they thought I was gay. So <laughs> one day I'm going, I'm talking to one of these guys, and I'm going. So my girlfriend and I went out last week, and he says, "Your girlfriend?" And I went, "Yeah, my girlfriend." He says, "You're straight?" I said. Yeah, anything wrong with that? He says, uh, not really, no. I said, he said, but you're straight. I said, yeah. I swear to you, the next week they canceled the show. <laughs> because I wasn't gay. I didn't fit in. So, you know. Mm. Could I have sued for discrimination? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> You wouldn't get a court in California to hear it, or in uh, San Francisco. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Well, I, 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 it's got to have been some reverse discrimination like that. Yeah. Uh, but now, Jim, why are you wearing dark glasses tonight? Uh, did you go to the <laughs> eye doctor and he put some drops in your eyes? What, what well, happened there? My glasses haven't arrived. These are prescription, so I can see the screen. Wow. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, these were the ones. Is this under the health plan up in Canada that you got these uh, glasses? No, no, no. These are prescription sunglasses that I have. Yeah, but your prescription glasses, which you bought last week in, uh, where was it, Camel Toe? I ordered them in Kamloops, and they should be here on Monday. And in the meantime, you don't have another pair you can wear? I have, a, but they're not, uh, an old prescription, but they're not that... I was doing some stuff on the computer, and they're kind of old, and so these actually give me the best sight on the computer at the moment while I was doing some show prep. So, yeah, uh, so, it, it, but they do give you the best uh, possible. Yeah, all right, okay. I can still see. I can see this with the other ones. Everything's yeah. kind of blurry because they're old frames yeah. and lenses. Now, and do you want to tell everybody today what what happened with you? The big interview. <laughs> He he uh, he's going to get some big big press oh. very shortly. Oh, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> big big press. And in fact, I something? had to I had to do an interview. You ruined the the story, Dan. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, we go uh, ahead. Pretend I didn't say it. Yeah, <laughs> pretend he didn't. He didn't say it. Where's David? Huh? <laughs> Where's yeah. David? Yeah, David. David suddenly David's disappeared. Uh, Anyway, yeah, David will put him in his place. Yeah, David. <laughs> tell him, tell David's, him who. Uh, forget what Dan. He's been vindicated. Oh, right where's now. David? Yeah, we need a replacement for Dan. Uh, no, uh, 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 Jim. Tell him, tell him who interviewed you. Everybody, forget what Dan said. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Tell him who interviewed you. I was interviewed by the Times. By the Revelstoke Times. Oh, no, uh, the New York Times. <laughs> yeah, no, the Revelstoke Times Review. <laughs> the Revelstoke Times Review. All, yeah. If it's news and it fits, it prints. Is that what their, their motto is? Hey, you know, things have quieted. They used to publish twice a week, but now they've gone back to once a week. Now, what's the difference between that and the weekly shopper? Uh, we have we have that, too. You have but that, it's, too. It's, that's one guy. This is this is more <laughs> than one guy. Oh, the Revelstoke Rebel, Times Review has like five guys. Yeah. But, so, so how many guys actually work the Revelstoke Times Review? Five. Five. Yeah, you know, five guys. Five guys. Somebody, <laughs> yeah. Like that, like the Phil's the got the five time. guys. Yeah. And I had, I had to tell them the other day that Warren Buffett came to town. <laughs> yeah, Warren Buffett did come to town. Yeah, and I had ago. to tell them that. Yeah. And yeah. they were like, oh, really? They didn't know? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Did the guy come by and wear a little hat with press in it and stuff like that? You know, no, no. So he came by today to you, the you said, broadcast. Well, you said to me earlier on today when we were talking behind everybody's back, since they talked behind ours. That's right. That you, um, um, that that you don't think he understood anything of what you were doing. I no, I I just don't. I didn't say that. I I said I don't think he got it. He listened to Adventure Night the other night, yeah. and I I think that's. I think that's an awkward. I, if that was the first thing he ever heard, I don't know if, he'll truly get what I do kind of thing. Yeah. He said listen to some archive stuff, but, Adventure Night is a little different. 
Yeah. 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 Uh, but so, it, so, I don't know. So you don't know. Okay. Uh, we'll see what happens on Wednesday when it's, when it's written. It took me a few shows to figure out exactly what you were all about. I was like, what's he trying to do here? And then all of a sudden, it, wow. It's the most brilliant <laughs> radio ever. Yeah. I mean, uh, the tremendous amount of talent to be able to just take you someplace. And, and I think I told you this when we chatted on Skype once. I, I can't tell sometimes when you're telling the truth. I'm always telling the truth. Or when you're in your, in your theater of the mind. It's it's I'm 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 I I swear it's the truth. Well, here's the thing that's kind of strange. Uh, I, he then asked me, uh, so how many people hear him every month or uh, hear him? So I I actually pulled you the embellished. I, well, no, I no, I didn't <laughs> oh. embellish. I actually can look up <clears throat> the number of times people. Uh, hit his XML file, which is the file that tells all the shows that he that he has. Now that doesn't mean they push any of the buttons, but they check his XML file. And I checked, and then I then he this guy asked me, and um, I said, "Oh, he has about twelve thousand iTunes people checking in on him every month." He did that in July, and then I realized I was wrong. Because actually it's 18,000. Uh, and Jim, he asked Jim the same question. And Jim <laughs> thought he was lying. And he said to him, 9,000. No, I thought I, I said 7,000. I said 7,000. Oh, really? And, and yeah, and I thought, uh, I thought, oh, I, I think it's 7,000. Yeah, and then you should have, just so he, he could understand it fully, you should have said to him, you know, that's more people than there are in Revelstoke. <laughs> well hopefully he knows that part yeah yeah so yeah so by the way i don't know what any of those numbers translate into folks yeah. so don't even how, did, how does that compare to the sign huh the rebel stoke sign you said there's, there's a website for the for the sign how many hits do they get i don't know how many they get you know alex i find moment. it interesting you say that you don't know what those numbers translate into but mm -hmm. for years and years and years you lived and died by the Arbitron ratings, and you really didn't know what those numbers translated into either. It's just a measurement. You don't really know how accurate they were. And with the people meter, we've possibly found out that it probably weren't very accurate. So it's just a it's just a you know a rating of some kind, and the numbers are good. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, it it's something. You know, uh, I I don't know what it means exactly. It could mean that people. You know, eighteen thousand people checked the HTML, or the XML file, but they didn't. Uh, maybe the two of them pushed the button for Jim. I don't know. You know, I have no idea. Uh, but uh, those, of course, always very encouraging numbers. But uh, the, you know, I, 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 I'm, I don't know. I'm just it's no different. Let's not the, even get into no. it. I, I'm so depressed lately by it. We haven't heard from Josh this evening. We haven't heard from Patrick. Two very quiet people who tomorrow night, by the way, will be doing their own private show at 10 o'clock <laughs> Eastern time. <laughs> With David. Checkmates. Y yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it, 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 it fit that we decided that uh, for the weekend... Just mash up. Yeah. What it? What happened here? Yep. Okay. Oh, there we go. All of a you sudden, mashed. my screen went black. Um, for, for the weekend mash up, that David could be in charge because the name Checkmate made sense. So, and all it all it is is just sitting around bullshitting about the topic. So. And, yeah. You know, so. Well, that's what yeah. we do here, anyway, isn't it? Pretty much. Uh, yeah. We just cover, we just cover uh, uh, other stuff that I would miss during the week. Sometimes just very minuscule things. Well, we could let the we could let we could let the rewind start late, right? Uh, uh, right, Rob. Look, in my mind, I'm no superstar. You, I would love it if we didn't have any rewinds. If we had programming that ran live all the time, goodbye, rewind. <laughs> uh, no, but I, you know. It, and, um, and maybe let you do a game show early. I mean, these are all suggestions from uh, uh, from Jeff, Jeff <laughs> who is our new program director here at uh, the, uh, GabNet. 
<laughs> what? What, Patrick? They, you, they, know, they, you know what? What? <laughs> What? <laughs> I, I almost choked on my coffee when you said his name. Yeah. And what makes me sad yeah. is last week I agreed with him on one thing yeah. on Albert's show, yeah. and I felt like I needed a shower afterward. Oh boy! You know I loved hearing him tonight, and then you could do this, and then you do that, and you know, and you can, you know. Hey, anybody wants this show for two hours, you got it. Take it, please. Do Jeff and Doug. Huh? Jeff and Doug. Jeff and Doug. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Jeff, Jeff and Doug for two hours. Huh? You know what? I would smash my fucking computer, and I would never listen to the network again. Never. Fuck oh. And I know everything gone to hell. Well, but, uh, it, but then I will have great relief, you see, because then I won't have to do a show every night, and, you know. You'll have relief, and then I'll be out two or three thousand dollars on my computer. Oh, yeah, because you ruined it. Well, I wouldn't break a computer over them. What, my iPhone? That's three hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. So you would break everything just to not have here, here Jeff and Doug together. Oh, my God. How about, oh. the, how about just one or the other? I, you know, I, I could deal with, with Doug. You could deal with Doug. I, I could absolutely. Uh, yeah, if I had to deal with one or the other, Doug would be my, would be my choice. Although, you know, uh, I, I don't think I'm forced to make a choice. Of course, I'll, 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 uh, can, I, can I tell you something? This is really, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say <laughs> this. Go. You know what I'm going to say, Jim? Yeah, I know. <laughs> About how stupid say. Doug is? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Tony. Start yeah. your camera again. You keep uh, all I keep seeing is Kukla and Ollie. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I uh, see myself. Though. I know that it doesn't matter. I oh, see, you see know. it. That's a reflection in the screen, yeah. Tony. I don't know. It's, it's starting again to whirl, but you know, for some reason or another, it's not catching in. It doesn't matter. We we love seeing here. I'll show the audience there. There's Kukla and there's Ollie. I anyway. got the DVD right here. Huh? I got my DVD yeah. right here too. Yeah, but you can't show it to us because we can't oh, see right. it. But anyway, uh, J Jim, you're laughing at it. It, it. You know, a couple about a what is it? Two, three weeks ago, we changed our uh, Skype number, and I he he's been blocked from the show. Duh, yeah, the only guy right. we block because he just ruins any show he's part of. Oh, um, is he trying to call Sabrina in? Sabrina and Jason McKenney are calling. I go. I gotta go get ready for the show anyway. Okay. So okay. You continue, uh, and oh, then all right. I'll Okay, bye. Bye. Let me answer bye. them. There we go. Uh, hello, uh, uh, Samantha, Sabrina and Jason, are you there? Hey, how's it going? How you going? Well, I guess just Jason. Just Jason, yeah. Just Jason this evening. No, but what I was going to say is um, we went to a new Skype number, and I blocked him on the show. But I could only block him from that old Skype number. He's not Ooh. blocked from this Skype number. Oh, uh -oh. So I've been waiting for him to call so I could block him. Oh. I've been waiting for him to but call I can't, too. But I can't block him by calling him because then he'll think he's wanted. Oh. You know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so. uh, yeah if, you, if you call him, then he's wanted. Oh, then, then he can get, so. away, he could get away with calling Albert's show then. Oh, he probably could, yeah. Yeah, he could yeah. call Albert's show. Yeah. And if Albert will take Jeff, he'll take Doug. And then Patrick will break his radio or his computer. You know, I think I want to set up that show with me, Doug, and Jeff all drunk off our ass just to see Patrick oh, uh, flip out. <laughs> you need to have a two-drink maximum. <laughs> oh, minimum. But, but you know what? I don't think one half of that has to do with being drunk. I think it's just personalities. No, I mean, Doug, Doug was really cool when he wasn't drinking. Yes. He, Doug he was okay. annoying Doug at all. was okay when he wasn't drinking. And, and he's very intelligent, too. Yes. He, he doesn't rub it uh, off the right I, way, I, but I, he is very intelligent. Really? You think so? Yes. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> you know I, I won't give him that, but I will say that, you know, he, he was manageable when he, didn't, when he was, wasn't drinking. But he, uh, you know, he, you could listen to him on Albert's show and he'd be moderately okay, right? 
Then you get to my show, you know he's kind of half-baked. By the time he gets to calling Revelstoke Jim, he was almost un... You couldn't even understand what he was saying. It was Babbling. So, by yeah. the way, turn on some more lights in your room there, Jason, because we can't even see you. You, you look like... Uh, it's a tribute to Zachary. There, there we go. The, oh, the darkness. <laughs> uh, there we go. Hey, what's what's the tattoo you've got there? Since this is this is uh, TV night, that's a what? What is that? I don't know, man. It's something I drew up as a kid. Oh, really? But and I always said, if you're ever going to have a tattoo, yeah. you should draw it up yourself yeah. and at least carry it around for two years before you ever get it. In other words, look at it, make sure it's what you yeah, want. Yeah, make sure it's something that you're going to want. Yeah, yeah. So those you only carried for one? <laughs> no, I, I carried those both for two years in my wallet and looked at them every single day yeah. before I ever got one. And there's Sabrina next to you. Hi, Sabrina. Hi, Sabrina. He says, I have, sorry, I have the earphones in so she can't hear. Uh, Hello. Hello. How are you? Hello. Great. Yeah, we actually like it when he calls so we can see you. Anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, where were we? Oh, yes, uh, 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 Teresa. I, I wish I had taken that advice. I did not do that with my tattoo. I was going through my divorce, and it was like a liberation thing, and I just went for it, designed something, and got it, and had no idea at the time that it was called a tramp stamp. <laughs> and I did not. I did not. That's how naive I was back then. And um, no, well, one day, yeah. years later, bending over in front of one of my sons, and my oh, son no, freaked thought. out because his mother had a tramp stamp. Well, my girlfriend, my <laughs> wife, has a tattoo around her ankle. It's uh -huh. kind of like a, like it looks like a little, uh, I don't know. Ankle bracelet? Kind of. It's cute. And it's got a name on it. Ooh. Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Her ex-husband. I, 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 I think I've never really asked her who Buddy was. But uh, been afraid to. It always has bothered me that she didn't go somewhere and have it kind of erased out and put in Alex. You know? <laughs> so what I figured I would do, you know this stuff, this, uh, what do they call it? Something bomb. Henna? That, the henna? No, it's uh, some kind of thing. It's called something bomb. Tattoo bomb or something, okay, yeah, and you take it. it and you, you put it on yourself every day, and it makes tattoos fade. I was thinking, like when she was asleep every night, I would go in there and like rub some of it on Buddy, so that you eventually she'd lettuce. look down there and go, "What the fuck happened to Buddy?" <laughs> All these people are getting these tattoos. These dumbass tattoos are going to be sorry when they're older. Now yeah, you yeah. know his tattoos. He created them. He made them up. They have some meaning to him. You know, do you have any tattoos, Sabrina? Have you joined the tattoo club? <laughs> what, what is that? That is a, uh, see, they, this is TV. Star. 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 It's a star. Is that it? Uh, I was being rebellious. Yeah. Is that it, though? That's yeah. That's it, yeah. That's it. Okay. Uh, and, of course, we got Tramp Stamp Teresa. I can't believe you have a Tramp Stamp. <laughs> <laughs> mine, is, mine is a yin-yang. A yin and yang. Yeah, I got you, oh, Teresa. Let's see. You're on TV. Yeah. Uh, show, uh, show everybody on TV. You really want to see it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. sure. Uh, you're going to have to take your it. pants off. I don't think that's a good idea. I, I don't have to take your pants off. All she has to do is dip her pants down. Exactly. Okay, go ahead. Okay, okay. because it's, it's TV it night, down. and all no, you people who aren't watching yeah. now on TV will no, have to watch it on the replay. Let me see here. We First, we got to get over... Check first. Oh, I have to look for it. Yeah, okay. We could just see a little bit of crack. Okay. Oh, there it is. There it is. Now, <laughs> now what? Let me see here. Going closer. Oh, and that is a. Like what a is bird. that? What is that? Is that a Batman? <laughs> well, the yin yang is right there. It's, and then it's it, yeah, it's it, in the oh. middle, and then there's like. And then it tramp stamps out from there. Right. Yeah. Now, were they called tramp stamps when you did it, or did they? Evidently, I don't know. I, I didn't know. I just went and did it, like, on a whim at New Hope, Pennsylvania. Yeah, well, what I thought were the stupidest ones, you know, and then Pamela Anderson got one, and then everybody got one, were those, those, those slave bracelets around the yeah. arm. Those are going to look really good yeah. when she's, like, 80, and those arms of hers are turning into, you know, flaps. <laughs> 
Uh, this is going to be a big business probably within the next tattoo 10 removal. years of tattoo removal. There already is. There already is, Can they yeah. take them off? Huh? Can they take them off? Yes. Yeah, yes. They, they, not, it, very, well, not very well. Well, it depends, it depends on the tattoo and depends the on the color. technology just jumped a lot in the last three years with tattoo removal. Yeah. You know, before where it used to take 20 times of going in treatment, now you can go in three times and have it removed. I think I saw some place they said, well, you go in once and they just, you know, zap it out. But there's a problem with... Um, and I'm trying to remember what the colors are, but certain colors do not. Uh, you can get rid of black. I want to say it's red. I think it's red is very difficult to get rid of. If you go out and just get yourself a tattoo with black in it, you can probably get that removed. Oh. In fact, I think Buddy is written in black, if I'm not mistaken. So. <laughs> but I don't understand why people don't get a henna tattoo prior to getting an actual ink to tattoo to see if they really want it. Because you nobody know? gets a tattoo unless That's they're drunk. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> How about when they get their names? You ever see these? Well, not Jewish. I mean, I remember when I was in the <laughs> no, Navy. Henna tattoos. When, when I was in, all over the Middle East, when they I was get in, the henna tattoos. I was in yeah. the Navy, and I was uh, uh, on a ship, and we slept in these bunk beds, right? And I had this guy uh, below me. Uh, most people are below you had a guy me. Below most you? people are below me, but <laughs> this guy was definitely <laughs> below me. <laughs> and the guy and so, thought I heard, too. Yeah. yeah. But anyway... Uh, uh, it, it was below me, and uh, it, he wakes up in the morning. He goes, "Oh my fucking Christ!" And I go, and I, I wake up and I look down. And I go, "What?" He said, "I felt this pain in my leg." And he said, "I got really drunk last night, so I thought maybe I got into a fight, and then I ripped this bandage off. Look, the Road Runner." <laughs> <laughs> I, and I never, Jeez. at that time in my life, I never met anybody ever got a tattoo sober. You know? <laughs> they just got tattoos when they were drunk. Both my tattoos were oh, oh, uh, sober. Uh, 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 Sabrina, drunk? Drunk at the time? I was sober. Oh, you were sober? Sober. So Both okay. of mine are sober. Well, no, but you know, yours are considered works of your own personal art. You know what I'm saying? So that makes a big difference. It makes a big difference than, like, Okay, so I watch porn. I'll admit it. And, and, and there are a lot of tattoos in porn these days. And it makes me want to throw up. You know? Yeah, I find it attractive either. It, it, well, I, I find it, it distracting when I'm porn. trying to jerk off. And instead, I'm trying to read what's written on the side of somebody. You know, and it usually, it usually you know, the most common one I think I've seen in porn? Carpe Mom. diem. Oh, carpe diem. Carpe the diem. Day. Oh, it means seize the day. Good, I'll do it. Or what is that? Oh, that's the Chinese symbol for fuck or something. I don't know. But, they, uh, or they think that's what it is, but it's really something else. Then uh, 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 Edith Joe's. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the people go out and get so many piercings, they look like they fell face down in a tackle box. You know. You ever the worst thing have is holes in areas too. What? They have like holes in here. Yes, I see them on the train a lot. Like they have a, it's like a circle with like a ring in it. They must punch their ear through like an ear place. Oh, you, oh, you mean with the big holes yeah. in the ears? Yeah, it's like oh my. Who knows, who knows, what, a, who knows what a Prince Albert is? Yeah. I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a tobacco. It's the tobacco. No, no, no. It's a Prince thing Albert they shove can. up there. Uh, no, Prince Albert's not in the can. No, that's not can. <laughs> A pr no, an a Prince Albert is a uh, stud going through the tip of one's penis. Yes, oh, I had no oh idea goodness. what that was. I or just or a ring. Wait a minute. Exactly. I think I, th I, I think Mark Thorner says he has one. At least he's no. raised his hand. No, I used to have one. Oh, but my I didn't like no. it. Does it help with an enlarged prostate? <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I think it we hurts. got a winner here. Jason, you say you had one. Yeah, I used to have one, but my wife didn't like it. She what? said it hurt. It hurts a lot. Okay, let me, wait, let me, hold on a second. I, I'll get to you in a second, Mark, but you got to admit, this is fascinating, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Why, Jason? I don't like it, but first, it actually hurt. So. For, okay, well, we'll get to that I in a tried. moment. I tried. But... Why did you get a Prince Albert? What possessed you to go in and say, "Oh, go ahead, drive it"? Did cool. you did you have did you have like the half Nelson where it like went through one side of the uh, of the opening and it was a ring, or did you have a stud going through the two of them? What? It was a ring yeah. that goes through and then out the hole. 
Uh-huh. 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 It's just really uh-huh. when you're what, trying to go what, 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 and, what, and, 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 and you have to sit down. And <laughs> look at look at Patrick. Pat. Pat. No, now the question let me, is. Let me stay there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm paralyzed. You could you could drive a railroad bike through my dick and I wouldn't feel it. But you know what? I wouldn't do it because <laughs> even the thought of any it, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but here's the thing. Here, here's the thing. My cousin, who is also paralyzed, he ended up getting it done before he became paralyzed or decided to become paralyzed. Yeah. He ended yes. up going to a zero cage, <laughs> that, which is freaking huge. Well, he, he, he he said, he, here's, my que- here's my question for you. He, 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 he takes a Viagra and lets women ride on him for hours. <laughs> first, first of all, why did you do it? What, what what possessed you to do it, dude? Man, it's a good way to get tail. Really, really? You have to advertise yeah. it. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Sabrina's raising her hand. Yes, Sabrina. Did it work? Worked. It okay. it, oh, it worked. It hurt. But oh, it hurt. Worked. We got married. <laughs> but you said it worked. What, do you have a <laughs> sign? So did you? You li- got me there. Oh, did you like it? Or, or, or you had him remove it, right? Uh, yes. Now, when, you, yes. when you've got that ring going through the penis and then through the hole, how do you, when you go to the bathroom, keep from looking like a lawn sprinkler? <laughs> That's what it says. You had to learn to twist it the right way so you could pee because even as you get older, you shoot in two different directions, but this made you almost shoot in three different directions, no, only, so you only, had to twist only, it the right way. Only when you have so prostate problems. Toilet, not in your pants. So it's, it's just constant pee. maintenance all the time. Huh? Can you tell us about the experience of getting it? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, Rob, oh, wait a minute. First, Mark has something he wants to say. Then Rob will ask uh, 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 well, Jason a question. Yeah. When I had my office on Fifth Avenue, mm-hmm. Uh, downstairs next door was a deli. Above the deli was the company that called itself the Gauntlet. Oh, yeah. It did all the piercings. And whenever I would go in for a deli sandwich, there would be <laughs> someone <laughs> from the Gauntlet, you know. And I, 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 I mean, all the one thing I wanted to have with my twisted mind, I wanted a big, powerful magnet. <laughs> I I was like, you're kidding, you know. I, I was like, oh god, my. Anyway, I was that's... worried I'd set off the metal detectors in the airport and have to explain or myself. They, or if they sent you in for an MRI. Well, or now as long as we're talking, you know, this is like when I've, we've got Rick there and Teresa in the in the in the in, the, in a frame, and we've got uh, Jason and Sabrina in a frame. It kind of looks like the newlywed game here, yeah. you know. And, Looks like and we got twelve. And uh, like, how long have you two been married, Sabrina and Jason? Seven. Seven. We've been together for seven well, years. We've been married, married for four years. For... And Rick and Teresa are newlyweds. Yeah, it's not even a year. November will be a year. Really? Yeah. Oh, isn't that cute? November what? <laughs> the, uh, ninth. Ninth. Yeah. Oh, for the second. Cool. Now you had a qu- you had a question. Yeah, I, I would like you to describe for us what. It was like to have this procedure done. Oh, you know why you should? I'm glad you asked that question. Is because I can watch the pain look on Patrick's face as he describes. Just go ahead. The same thing. It's already Jason. there. Can you go through it like a little at a time and tell us what it was like? You know, the the description is so much worse than the pain actually was. When I got it done, they they ended up telling me getting your ear pierced is actually worse. I have both. I have my ears. Oh, I have my ears. I don't pierced. believe that for a but, minute. <laughs> they, they take a tube, and like a straw, and put it down oh. your urethra. Let me look it out through uh, the side. We lost, we lost Patrick. He's actually gone to his <laughs> frozen screen. Like through the side? They push they, they, out through the side. They, they just push so there's a little bit of pressure so they can see the, where the ring of the straw is. And then right. from the outside, they take the needle and they push it. Uh, <laughs> Teresa's holding her ears too. Oh my it, it god! Really, it did, didn't did they hurt. give it you anything for the all. pain? No, 
It did not, not hurt at all. <laughs> yeah, it didn't hurt at all. My, did surprised. my ear pierced when I was a kid was just as bad. Well, I got my ear pierced because my it was did, nothing. But, but it was only because of a girlfriend who said to me, "You know, my mother and I, uh, we thought you'd look really great if you got your ear pierced." So I mentioned this on the radio. Next thing I know, my producer has somebody in the studio to pierce my ear. And then, <laughs> as as my girlfriend was leaving to go to Greece for a couple of months. Uh, she said, Jim, my mother and I were talking the other day. You really look great with two earrings. And I told this story on the air. And next day I know there's a guy there again putting another earring in my ear. Uh, but I Same didn't find here. it that painful. You know what one of the most erotic experiences was I ever had? I had a girlfriend who wanted to get a nipple, pier- her nipple pierced. And she wanted me to go with her while she did it. And she held my hand while she did it. And for some reason, that was absolutely an erotic experience. I don't know why, but uh, just, you know, just her grabbing onto the hand and so on as it was happening, just kind of, I don't know. I'm weird. Hey, you can can come back now, Patrick. You can come back. Perfectly normal. You can come back. We're not. uh, It's for sale. Yeah, he's he's not not (laughs) like he's showing where the hole was or anything like that. I saw his fucking hand do something. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's, I, that's real quick. Well, that could also mean having sex too. The hand thing. You know what? If he would have said it like that, I would have just looked at it and said, "Oh, look." It well, as, as long what as they, we're on this piercing subject, what did uh, they put on the straw? Did they put any kind of lubricant? I'm sure they put something on there because I, you know I did have the uh, Q-tip shoved down. Oh, hey, all right, all right, come on, I, Patrick. Pa- I told uh, Patrick. I told Patrick it was safe to come back. Stop it. And you were worried about Gaza losing listeners. <laughs> yeah. Well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. How are we doing? No, this will actually attract listeners, just not guys. Actually, actually, we're not doing badly tonight. You know, between the TV and the and the thing. Wow. Yeah. yeah, we're doing okay actually. So, well, if you're gonna stick so just down keep it up, so to speak. Well, but here's the thing: just is, is, there, is there anybody else here who has a tattoo that we don't know about? Uh, uh, Rob, Mm-mm. are you defiled in any way? No, no tattoos. Is your just body a temple? Piercing. Is it? You know, I I never got a tattoo because I was always told you could never get a tattoo if you were Jewish because you could never I be buried decide. in a Jewish cemetery. But I, I can be buried in a Gazan cemetery. <laughs> I can't decide on a painting I want to put on a wall, let alone something I'm going to wear forever. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, it's going to look like a little do, mess. My grand- carry it around for two years before you ever get it done. Do it yourself. Yeah. I, I actually enjoyed the um, whole experience. I, 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 everybody told me it was going to hurt, and it didn't hurt. Mm-hmm. I, I, I enjoyed the feeling of the... The needles, right? Yeah, yeah, but you like fire cupping, too. You know something? If we ever started in with you two people. <laughs> oh, cup, cupping? Is anybody going to get a gabnet tattoo? <laughs> oh, that'd be perfect. That'd be yeah, cool. we should do it. We have to get a good logo first. Uh, you, know. you got one already, Alex. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, Albert did Our part Patrick of it, and I did that. the other part of it. So. Oh, Patrick did? Huh? Uh, Patrick designed the logo? No, no, no. No, oh, there's no. no logo. But... There, the circle with the uh, microphone and stuff like that, uh, it says Great American Broadcast on it, that the crest, as we call it, the shield, Albert did. And then uh, uh, it used to be on my prep sheet every day, only it said the Alex Bennett program. And then we, uh, he did that, and then I put that on the flag and with the gab net, and that became our, our little logo. And, it, you know, it served, it's, has served us well so far. Um, uh, uh, um, does uh, does Sabrina have any any piercings or anything like that, or is she is her body a temple? She used to have her tongue pierced and yeah. her belly button pierced, but then when we had a child, she had to take the belly button out and then the tongue. Because well, that's where uh, the babies come out. That's, that's, that's where the babies come out of. No. What about these the people belly. that split their tongues? Oh, uh, dude, I thought that was so cool. I wanted to do that so bad. Oh really? Oh man. <laughs> uh. <laughs> There I would need two of those drinks that Rob is having right now if I saw one of those. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so, so she pretty much her body is your body is pretty much only just a star, and that's it, huh? And then the uh, the uh, did you get rid of the tongue as well? Having a, having a child changed me completely. What having a baby? Yes. 
Why you didn't want them to want the kid to uh, look up at his mother and mother and see that tongue? Well, with oh, the- I mean, with the the belly button piercing, I knew it was going to stretch out, and you know that wasn't going to be well. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, the, the tongue piercing, he didn't care for it either way. So it got stuck in my. He piercing. didn't care for it. <laughs> they tangled, so we had to call nine one one and have him get us unstuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, throw hot water no, on him. No, this is a little embarrassing. This is probably the stupidest question I've ever asked. But Tony, you don't have any piercings or tattoos, do you? No, my body's clean. What I got a vaccination. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Two shots to the arm because he screwed up the first time. I heard. <laughs> what do you Look want? at Patrick. Look at Patrick. <laughs> Patrick's dying. <laughs> Poor Patrick. It's the funniest show we've done in years, isn't it, yeah. Patrick? I swear, just having Tony on here right now, you guys should get like a drop of him saying, "Okay, fuck it, bye." Sounds mm-hmm. just we like that. See, <laughs> uh, uh, um, so Tony, you you have no piercings. How about your dog? Does he have any piercings or tattoos? Kanko's <laughs> only three and a half months. She just does poop on the floor. Oh, well, That's now's the it. time to do it. Yeah, yeah. Get a no I mean, you know, with us, with, with, with us Jews, we get circumcisions within uh, how many days? Is it uh, anybody remember? It's a week, isn't it? Or Mark, do you remember how many? How many? Yeah, it's a couple of days. By the way, I uh, I was a. Uh, I, 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 anybody here ever been to a bris? Yes. Uh, uh, Mark, yeah. I'm sure has been to one. Pat, uh, 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 Rick, uh-huh. you've been to one. Yep. A bris is. Uh, do you know what a bris is, folks? Mm-hmm. Yeah. A bris is the That's, circumcision. Oh, it is the circumcision ceremony. How you can have a ceremony surrounding this kind of action, I have no idea. But what they do is they get the baby really drunk first by by taking a towel and soaking it in wine and letting him teeth on it until he gets drunk enough. You don't use the Prince Albert either. Y- do yeah, they really yeah. do that? And then the, bub- the bubba, the grandmother, holds the baby, Right. Yeah. While the moil, who is the rabbi cuts with the knife, cuts oh, off the tip. And oh, then the baby that's... cries like a stuck pig. Oh. And uh, everybody says, Mazel Tov. <laughs> and the moil saves, great... saves the foreskins. He makes oh. little wallets, and when you rub them, they turn into steamer trunks. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> but the thing is, no, Rob remembers the Seinfeld episode with the drunk <laughs> moil. Yeah. You're making me nervous. <laughs> uh, the, the knife old, doesn't not... actually look like a knife. Yeah, yeah but what but, I saw it looked like a cigar cutter. But anyway, this is my friend yes. David Feldman's <laughs> son uh, was getting getting the uh, uh, the treatment, and the, the, in in the uh, <laughs> this is true. This is David's sense of humor. I was assigned a task, and the task was that at a bris. They always have somebody read a passage from a meaningful book for the family. And so he had me read several paragraphs from Moby Dick. (laughs) (laughs) It's a classic. (laughs) Brilliant. Brilliant. Just wonderful. Right. Boy, you're getting a lot of stuff for tonight, aren't you? For, for the rewind, aren't you? Hell yeah. Yeah. Good show. Yeah. This whole show is going By the way, right. I like the game show tonight. Thanks. I had fun doing that. There, there, those are some tough questions. Yeah, but you know what? Every There wasn't one that didn't get answered tonight. Uh huh. So oh, so there's no leftover that. for me to try? Oh, I've got a ton of them. Oh, well, try a few on me. Come on. Try, try a few on me. Because. I swear that tonight we are never going to, we're not even going to for a moment talk about Gaza. <laughs> Gaza free zone. Gaza free. Yeah. yeah. So uh, let me ask you, which, which category, actors and actresses, politics, uh, political figures, rock music, sports, which category? I'll let the audience uh, figure oh, out which oh, one. Sports. Give them sports. Oh, give me sports. <laughs> He's got an Emmy. Okay. <laughs> well, wait, okay, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me try sports. Go ahead. No sports. Go sports. Huh? All right. Oh, uh, 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 Sabrina's giving the thumbs down. Uh, yeah, sports. All right, here we go. Mm-hmm. I was born in Kansas City, Missouri in 1890. Oh, I, should, I think I... Uh, oh, God. 1890. That means he was playing baseball maybe in the... Tw- 
in the 20s, mid, uh, uh, late, late, no. mid, -teen, mid teens. Second no. question. Lou, second Lou, clue. Lou Gehrig would be uh, uh, too Nobody old. Nobody knows too that. Uh, I played Sandlot baseball as a child. I also played football, basketball at Central High School. My basketball team won the city championship while the baseball team won the state championship. I know. George H.W. Bush. <laughs> <laughs> it could be uh, keep going. I had no particular vision of sports as a long-term profession, but rather had aspirations of a career in dentistry. Heisman. Um, nope. Uh, huh. Number four. I signed a contract with the Kansas City Blues of the Class A American Association, considered the best minor league in 1910. Uh, 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 I don't know. Honus Wagner? No. Nobody fucking knows. Some baseball award. No. Yeah. Clue number five. This isn't uh, Babe Ruth. It can't be. No, it's not. No. A Brooklyn Dodgers scouted. Uh, a Brooklyn Dodgers scout noticed me, and the Dodgers selected me in the 1911 Rule Five Draft. Oh, jeez, Almighty! Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Casey Stengel. You got it, Casey Stengel. Oh, very good. Very good. That was the Martin. thing when you said the year of the Brooklyn Dodgers. I said that it has to be Stengel. Yeah, yeah. Casey. Right. What does he win? A, he a wins. brand new car. A new car. <laughs> a new car if we ever make money. If we ever make money. Uh, okay, uh, let's take a question from, uh, uh, what's another topic area you people Actors would like? Actors and actresses, political figures, rock music. Political yeah. figures. Political figures? Okay. Let's try political figures. Okay. Okay. Clue number one, born in 1929. Might as well throw it in. George Bush. Hey. No. Born Number two, I began my career as a local singer and model. Oh, is that the background music for the, for sure. the quiz? Oh, okay. Sure. Okay. Meeting okay. my... Uh, uh, Number two, I began my career as a local hey, singer hey. and model before meeting my husband. Wait a minute. As a what? I began my career as a local singer and model before meeting my husband. Nancy Lauren Reagan. Bacall. No, this is political. Bush. Oh, this is political. Oh. I met my I husband. I am not an American. Oh, oh, uh, oh, gold in my ear. No. <laughs> Clue number four. At the request of my uncle, I returned to the city of my birth in 1950, where I worked as a, in a music store as a singer to attract customers. Ava Peron? No. Uh, okay. This is political, and yet we're number talking about... Number five. On December 1965... My husband was elected as president, and I served as first lady. Nancy Davis. No. Melda Marcos. Um, oh. Say again. Melda Marcos. Melda Marcos. I had ah. that, I had that two questions ago. Sure. Two clues ago. Saying. Two clues ago. I you would have won a car if you said something. Yeah. <laughs> See that? I'm they, looking like a brand new Chevy. I'm looking like the Second dumbest guy here. Second time I did here. that tonight. Because I keep forgetting the the title of the uh, of the category. Okay, uh, let's take one from movies. Whatever. What was that one? Actors and actresses. Actors and actresses. Come on, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> here we go. I was born in 1921 in New York. Babe Ruth. <laughs> 20, 21. My brother Bill was a comic book artist who drew for the Archie comic book franchise and others in the 1940s. Whoa. Mickey Rooney. Bill? Let's see. Uh, Mark should know this because he's big. No, up. I wouldn't. But maybe Tony would actually. This I don't know yet. I began I acting in my teens, working with the American Theater Wing. Hmm. Hmm. I gained acting notability in the 1960s with my work in Broadway productions. <laughs> He's born ben when, did you say? Ben Vereen, no. Um, I got my biggest film role through an open casting call in a 1972 movie. Now Pacino. No. Pacino. Dustin Hoffman. No. No. Uh, how old, how, when was he born, you said? 1921. 1921. Yeah. No, that's not him. Yeah. I gained further fame playing a detective sergeant on a popular TV 
sitcom in the 70s. Oh, 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 oh what's his name? Uh, 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 in Dragnet? Uh, Ernest Borgnine. No. Um, I, I, uh, uh, what's his name? Zimbalist Jr.? No, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of the guy who played Fish. Oh, Abe Vigoda? Abe Vigoda. Abe Vigoda. Yeah. yeah, he was in The Godfather too. Is that open cast? That's right. That yeah. was that was cool. open number casting. five, biggest film role in 1972 yeah. in an open casting call. He was in Barney Miller, wasn't he too? That's yeah. right. That's the uh, sitcom from the 70s. It was. I awesome. don't know. His in, brother was a uh, wow. Yeah. And he was oh. in The Godfather. Yeah. Tony, you show off. Huh? He said Tony, you show off. <laughs> <laughs> and he was fish. Yeah. Yeah. Fish. Uh, but uh, 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 yeah, but you know he he gets he, he's the last guy to get off in uh, in uh, in the Godfather. Yeah, you take him away in the car. Please, can't you do something for me? You've been a friend of the family uh, all these years. Is he the one where they say, Frost "Leave the gun, take the cannoli"? No, 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 no. That was Clemenza. Clemenza. That was Clemenza. Right. Yeah, that's one of the greatest lines ever in movies. I love that line. Leave the gun. Leave the gun. Take, take the, the cannolis. <laughs> oh, that's right. They got him. He, he, he saw it was coming. He got in the car, yeah. and then they grabbed it, him from behind it, with the rope or the. No, no, that, no, was, that uh, was that was that was uh, that was uh, Danny, uh, that was the, Danny, the, the was husband of of, of uh, uh, Connie's husband. Connie's husband. But yeah. this was they just took him off in the car, and he just yeah. before he goes off in the car, he says to. Robert Duvall, can't you do something oh, for right. me? Can't you get me off the oh, hook yeah. for old times' sake? Can't you get me off the hook for old times' sake? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's yeah. right. I think between all of us, I'm sure we could recreate the entire Godfather. I'm trying. Uh, do you know, I know comedians, Richard Belzer being one of them, who can recite by heart every word in The Godfather. God. Yeah. Artie Lang can, too. It, I have one friend, <laughs> Stephen Pearl, who not only can recite the entire Godfather, but all the Italian phrases in The Godfather. <laughs> and he's not even Italian. <laughs> Talking about comedians, did you know that the Irwin Corey was uh, 100 years old today? Wait a minute. Uh, really? er, it, he's still alive? Yeah, he's 100 years old today. You know, you may not believe this, but I've actually seen this guy fucking. Horrible <laughs> <laughs> part. No, I'm not kidding you. I used to go to these, these, they used to have these swingers parties in New York, and I would just go to them for the baloney. Oh, and, <laughs> and, yeah. and I went baloney. into this one room, and who's, who's, on, who's on the floor getting blown but Irwin Corey? It was a horrible sight. Uh, you, you should see a picture of him now. It informed my future <laughs> yeah. sexual career. What? You should see a picture of him now. Yeah. I'll tell you, though, very funny man. I saw his act back in the 50s when he's playing like the Hungry Eye in San Francisco. That was one of the funniest acts I've ever seen in show business. I carpeted the Hungry Eye. Did you carpet the Hungry Eye? Yes, I did. Mm, very good. <laughs> You've carpeted most of San Francisco. Well, most of Broadway. <laughs> yeah. Why you never called your car uh, company the Carpet Muncher, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, God, this is a ridiculous night, isn't it? Um, so, uh, Phil, have you actually carpeted like uh, famous people's homes? And yeah, who's the most famous person yeah. you carpeted? Uh, maybe Alex Bennett. <laughs> no, uh, I, the most famous. You know, I, I don't now know. you did the carpeting for me in San, in New York, right? No, uh, I think I did it in uh, uh, one of the Sausalito or something. Yeah. Okay. Uh, or I fixed something for you. Uh, talking about New York. Uh, I was in your apartment in New York. Wait, what is that sound? Uh, it's an airplane. Oh, uh, I thought somebody by. here was using a vibrator, and I wasn't going to say. <laughs> and suggest and to. we were talking about Naomi. I actually met her uh, one uh, uh, one morning uh, when I was 18 years old. And if you touch your shoulder, uh, that's where I think her legs started. And uh, and then went to the floor, and then there was blonde hair above that. She, no, she wasn't that tall. She was short. Uh, she, oh, she looked tall. Well, well she had was, she had a tall stance, but I think she was yeah. only like about five three. She wasn't tall at all. I think when I met her, she was wearing shorts. About uh, maybe the reason uh, her legs went around your uh, up to your <laughs> shoulder is because that's oh. where they usually wound up. Uh, uh, <laughs> and that with me, all I did was watch. I was eighteen. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, yo, she was, I, that was, uh, she, you can still see a picture of her with me if you get an old Al copy of the album, The National Lampoon Radio Dinner. 
right. And there's a picture of me and her in the on the inside. It was a it was a fold out. Oh. Yeah. You had hair then too. Down to here. Yeah. Right about where her legs started. <laughs> yeah. <No. laughs> um, but okay, uh, I got I got another question there, Rob. Plenty of them. <laughs> He's full of them. You're full of them. Now, do you write these questions, or do you have a place where you get them from? No, I write them. Really? Wow. Yeah. These are good. Um, oh, which category? Like which category? Let's try movies again. Oh, what, what were you going to say, Sabrina? What? What you had? No, I said it. What? Say I said the only category nobody asked in the last show, and this one is rock and roll. Okay, rock and roll. Music, yeah. Rock and rock music. Okay. Here's one that's um, Dwayne Allman. Okay. <laughs> All right. I was born in 19. I was born in 1946, and I have been recording music for over 20. Well, I guess it's going to be long. No, I've been recording music for over 20 years. Oh, well, that, it's longer yeah, than yeah. that now. That's it's longer than that now because this is one of my older questions. Born in 1946, and I can tell you she's been recording music a lot more than 20 years. Oh, okay. So, and I guess oh, she. Gave me a hint, oh, she. I? We just got a, a hint he didn't want to give there. She. George H. W. Bush. <laughs> <laughs> My first top 20 hit was in 1967. Oh, Nancy Sinatra. Wow, has she been recording for over 20 years? I think so. He's way over. Paid for walking. What else did she do? My career was like based you know, dude, I, I'll tell you a little trivia of what, before we get to your next question about this mythical human being that you're trying to describe. Uh, uh, Nancy Sinatra, uh, Bing, uh, uh, Frank Sinatra, in his entire career, never had a gold record. Do you know that? Really? Never yeah. had a number one hit. All right. Not All even right. Strangers wow. in the Night? Nope. Never had a number one hit. I Until he worked with Nancy on something stupid and it something went to number stupid, one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was the only number one hit he ever had. Wow. wow. Yeah. Things you learn. Okay. So back to this number four. My career was basically put on hold from 1967 till 1972. Oh. I toured Europe in 1976. I go to look like in after me. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just, no, uh, for some dead. strange she's reason, dead. I'm Come thinking. On. I'm thinking. She's still alive? I'm thinking. I'm thinking Stevie Nicks. No, no. Tina I, Turner? No. I won my second Grammy in 1976. Barbara Streisand? No. No, that was, she, she's a lot older than that. She was in 1909. Huh? In 1978, I had an album go platinum. Aretha. Olivia Newton, John. Aretha Franklin, she said? No, not Aretha. Not Olivia Newton, John. Not Olivia. Young. What are we going to do? Name clue. every female singer in history? This is going to be the giveaway clue right here. In 1980, I was in the Broadway play The Pirates of Penzance. Oh, of course, it's Linda Ronstadt. You said that. Yeah. I said that a while ago. I said that a while ago. Did you Sorry, really? Yeah. You should have shouted louder. With what clue? You're not sitting close enough. God, what did, no Chevrolet God, for you? Did, did I? Uh, did I have? Did I have? A I didn't hear. Did I have a crush on her? He did. Oh, say she was beautiful. I, uh, you know, I, I knew her a bit, and, and one time when we were in Washington with a demonstration or something, she was somewhere, and she looked over and she said, "Alex," and my heart like just wow. skipped yeah. a beat. I mean, she was adorable. But have you seen her lately? Oh uh, yeah, she's a yeah. Was she yeah. the one that dated uh, Jerry Brown? Yep. Yep. Uh, she and, just and George an and George Lucas. Yeah. Uh, she a, a major she had a crush on her. <laughs> she can't sing anymore. Yeah, she had Parkinson's. She had yeah. Parkinson's. What, what was she just got a medal she... of honor from the president. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. The only from, thing he from... did right all week, you know. But uh, but she looks. It's kind of sad in a way. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, because she old. was she was adorable. She's that old, yeah. huh? She's born in 1946. She's 11 years older than me. She's. 68. Okay, so she's 68, but still. Yeah. 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 Uh, but uh, it's just sad she can't sing anymore. She was also a good singer, too. She was a beautiful Al singer. Although, when she did... Um, she did the Nelson Riddle stuff? What, 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 yeah, yeah. And she also did Canciones de Mi Padre. Mm -hmm. But she also did She also did an Elvis Costello song. Um, what was it? Can't remember now. 
uh, Elvis Costello? Yeah, she did an mm-hmm. Elvis Costello song, and he asked her to pull it back and not release it anymore because he didn't want to hear her sing it. <laughs> oh, that's weird. Yeah. I'm trying to remember which song it was. It was a big hit for her, actually. What um, year? Do you remember? No. No. I don't remember. Uh, she was... Uh, she was... Uh, 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 you know who's releasing an album? I'm, th- this one I'm waiting for. This is going to be the best album ever. Okay? And I've heard a couple of, like, moments from it. But next month, they're releasing Lady Gaga and Tony huh. Bennett doing jazz. Wow. Oh, that's great. Great. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard Gaga do jazz, but yes. man, she's she shouldn't be doing this rock bullshit. I agree. She's too she's good, good for it. Yeah. Um, I agree. Yeah, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Somebody's raising their hand. Uh, uh, do I see uh, um, uh, Jason? Did you raise your hand? No, I'm just I'm twisting my, uh, oh, I see. my earplugs. I did some... Uh, uh, but anyway, where were we? Oh, yeah. So uh, that was the... Um, um, uh, I'm waiting for that album. That, that's going to be that'll, just sensational. Be um, Unfortunately, I think Tony Bennett is finally starting to lose his voice. Well, I think he lost it a long time ago, but he kind of says his stuff pretty well. Yeah, he, he, still, was able, he, still, he was able to pull it off. Unlike he, he still, well, he can still phrase, and yeah. that's what he does. He doesn't really try to belt out a note uh but hey you know it, it's gonna go someday you know that's an, it's uh, yep. it's not like an instrument that gets better with age it, it's, I mean, he's born in 1926 he's uh no child yeah 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 he's doing pretty well uh when when, when, when was he born 1926 so like that, 85 86 yeah. right 86. something yeah. like that yeah yeah, but I'm, uh, you know, I'm still, look, I, I'm still looking forward to it because she is so good, uh, yeah. and and people don't realize how good she is. She did this uh, special for ABC, and a good fifty percent of it was jazz, and it was really, really terrific. She one morning had uh, sat at a piano on in Howard's studio, and did just acoustic piano and her singing with some of her hits. Yeah, the songs were completely different. You would just fantastic. I, I hated her songs until I heard these, and I was like, "Yeah, oh, she this woman she has can sing. Yeah, she's got it. Sing." Yeah. Uh, and that's I what think, the name though that this Gaga name. It's uh, well, uh, she's well, got some well, no, kind of artsy fartsy thing going You know, thing know what, I, what I what I used to get from my wife was, "Why does Lady Gaga have to dress so silly?" You know, it, it just demeans her because she's so good as a singer. She doesn't need that. And I said. For, you know, it's like the story with the uh, mule and a uh, guy saying the way you train your mule is with love and kindness. And as he's saying that, the mule stops pulling the wagon, at which point the guy gets out of the wagon, takes a base, baseball back from the back of the wagon and hits the mule right between the eyes. Gets back into the wagon and the guy says to him, well, I thought you said you treat him with love and kindness. He says, yeah, but first got to get their attention. <laughs> well, that's pretty much that's pretty much the story with Lady Gaga. I mean, first you got to get their attention, and yeah. she was very good at that. Yeah. And, and now the question is, can she turn it around and have the career she really wanted, rather than the one that was handed to her because she had to get their attention? You know? She's got enough money now; she doesn't have to worry necessarily about making money, so she could get away from doing the pressure stuff, you know, to make cash. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And wearing and, meat and things like that. You know. Yeah, and and also, you know, she's gonna, she's not getting any younger. She's gonna, you know, those uh, sexy looks of hers aren't gonna last forever, and you know, she's gonna need that's to what I say about jazz myself. as a staple for her in her later years. Yeah. Um, so, uh, how many kids do you have, uh, uh, Sabrina and and uh, and Jason? It sounds like it's one, right? Just one. Yeah. Do you want any more? No, I got snipped. You, All done. You got yeah. snipped? Yeah. Wasn't that thing in your dick a, 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 enough of a deterrent? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> didn't it take care of it? <laughs> I think once no. you go through that, a snip is nothing. <laughs> you see, what you could what you could have done is instead of wearing a condom is just put a bucket on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, whatever. You still with us, Patrick? To, um, uh, <laughs> whatever what? happened to Mr. Lifto? Remember him? 
Mr. Lift, guy, though, I, look, I don't want to do. I don't want to do that to Patrick tonight. <laughs> I, really I know, don't. but it was going so good. We were almost there. His head was almost going to explode. I just. I knew. I have job. Mr. Lifto in my studio. Yeah. In San Francisco. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Lifto had a uh, <laughs> Prince Albert. Yeah. And then he mm -hmm. used to lift. Oh God. Fifty pound weights with his dick. Oh wait a minute! Oh, there goodness. we lost Patrick again. He froze. <laughs> See, we had a radio station, a talk radio station, that had people coming out doing their little special things that they could do. Yeah. I almost thought about doing that, and, like taking the case of beer and having a, a sock over my area. Yeah. And then uh, tying a cord to a case of beer and like dragging it across the stage. You know, we're never getting and, Patrick back. He, we why, him, he's now smashing you his computer. That? You realize that. Uh, what, what were you saying? He's looking for a case of beer. Uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe. I'm just thinking. No, but I had this guy from the Jim Rose uh, Circus, uh, and uh, they they the sideshow circus, and uh, he was called Mr. Lifto, and that's exactly what he did. Uh, I also had the Enigma. He brought the Enigma by. Wound up on the X Files. He's the guy with like uh, tattooed with like what looks puzzle like a puzzle yeah. pieces yeah. all over his body. Uh, some very strange people, some very strange acts, and I put them on radio. And everybody said, you can't do that on radio, but I had a studio audience. When Mr. Lifto came on, they were all going, oh, you know, and it really worked. <laughs> yeah, the reaction. The reaction you did the things crowd. on radio that nobody else did. I once brought you a uh, woman that was a, uh, a, a bodybuilder, and you actually uh, uh, hand-wrestled her uh, on the air, you know, uh, arm-wrestled her. I think that lasted about a minute and a half, didn't it? But yeah, but it, it, it went over. It was a great a great spot. Well, the first time I ever learned that you could do that kind of thing was I was doing a, a show here in New York, and uh, an illusionist came to me and said, can I come on your show? And I said, why? It's a radio show. And then I thought about it for a second. I said, absolutely. Let's see how a magic act works on radio. And believe it or not, it absolutely did. Yeah. It, and... and uh, I would uh, kind of be describing what was going on. And now, and at one point, uh, I don't know if I got time to tell the story quickly. It was at ABC. We were on the eighth floor of the building. And he had this thing, the, this, uh, this theatrical smoke that would explode. He had this ball and the ball would explode and, and theatrical smoke would be released. And I, to begin with, the, the shock of it knocked him out because he was in a soundproof room and the sound just came back to him. But the next morning, I hear they had a big fire alarm. Seemed all this, this theatrical smoke, which is really grease in a way, got up through the vents and went into the top offices and got into the president of ABC's office and they thought it was on fire. <laughs> Oh, anyway. Did you lose that job, too? Yeah, I did. I did. I, I, I lose jobs a lot. I lose them a lot, you know? Hey, listen, you know, we've run out of time here. Boy. And, Great show. Huh? Good show. And didn't say a word about anything. Politics. You no know? politics. Rings through dicks and whiskers yeah. on we'll kittens. See. Maybe this is the way to go. Hey, Josh. Yeah, this, I, this, uh, you know, we love you, but there was, no, there was no meat for you here. Nope, not today. <laughs> On Saturday, he gets his meat. Tomorrow night, they'll do, yeah. be doing their show Fresh privately. Uh, Patrick gives him his meat. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> thanks, Mark. Thanks, Rick. Thanks, Rob, as always. And don't forget to listen to his uh, rewinds over the weekend. Sabrina and Jason, uh, it's wonderful to see you. Sabrina, come back anytime. Jason, if you want to, okay. <laughs> and because uh, she, she, especially on TV night, she makes the place look classy and tony thanks for staying there even though your picture's been whirling around for hours now sorry well, that's okay hey and thanks to jim and was there anybody else to call? and christine for letting me hang up on her in the we'll see you all on uh, on monday i guess thank you for making yeah. me have a good night tonight bye-bye right. yeah, fun. Uh, i'm alex bennett we'll see you again tomorrow or monday same time same station in life and if you see her tell her i love her okay By the way, Revelstoke Jim is next.